One of the best and quickest ways to make money with your Glowforge is personalization. People love to have things with their names on it. And one of the best things to personalize and very, very popular are pencils, like this. But to do this properly, you really need to make a jig. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do that and how to personalize pencils. Hi, I'm Katie, and this is Things Katie Makes, where we talk all things Glowforge, especially projects for beginners, to help you get confident in your making skills so you can lean into your creativity in your business. Personalizing pencils is a little more challenging than some of the other projects that you might get started with as a beginner. Due to how small the pencils are, you really do need to use a jig. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a jig out of cardboard, and we will then place it so that we can reuse this jig every time we make pencils. That to me was one of the biggest things about making a jig is I don't really wanna remake it every time. I wanna have one thing that I can reuse, especially for something like pencils, if you wanna make a ton of them. Joe Martinson from Martinson Manufacturing had a really great tip in this video on how to make sure that you're placing that jig in the exact same place every time. So what Joe was talking about was really using the bottom left corner of the machine as your guideline when you make your jig because it's one place that's easy to line up your material. So I cut my piece of cardboard so that it'll fit within the laser bed. You also, when you're using a cardboard jig, are going to want to be able to hold it down with crumb tray pins. So I wanted to make sure that I had room for that. But I wanted to make sure that I could really line this up at the edge here. Now you'll see it's hanging off of the edge of my crumb tray because I'm actually going to bump it up against the door and that's how I make sure that it's placed properly. Our jig will be set up to hold 36 pencils. We'll make it both in Illustrator and in the Glowforge user interface. Once you're done, you'll be able to reuse that jig over and over. The concept works for any kind of jig that you'll want to make. So once you've done this, you'll be able to apply it to a lot of different projects. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a rectangle to hold our pencil. And we are going to make our pencil 7.5 inches wide and 0.265 inches high. So now I will duplicate this, Command C, Command V. I will duplicate this a few more times using that Command key. All right, so I have 18 here. So I am gonna go ahead and group all of these. I'm gonna select all of them. I am going to use the alignment tool and I am going to align their left sides first and then I'm going to evenly space them top to bottom. Then I will highlight and group all of them again. Command C, Command V to duplicate. So you could easily make a jig for each project that you do, but I know that I wanna reuse my jig. So I need to make sure that these are aligned. Now that everything is aligned, I want to group it. So I'm gonna select everything by clicking and dragging my mouse across everything. I am going to right click and I'm gonna to choose to group this. I am doing this so that I can place this in a specific place on my board. So within the ruler guidelines here. So that every time I use this jig, by placing the artwork in exactly the same place, and placing the material in exactly the bottom left-hand corner, I can ensure that my template is lined up every single time. I want to use the reposition function, and I wanna use this little grid here to position the bottom left corner. I'm gonna position this at 0.5 inches on the x-axis, and I'm gonna position it at 10.5 inches on the y-axis. Just using some nice round numbers, making sure that it's easily on the on the board it's going to fit but also something that i can remember where i placed it so this is what we will use to cut our jig we will cut it out of cardboard and we will use the regular settings that are there once we've done this i want to go back to my dashboard i want to rename this then i want to duplicate this jig so I'm gonna make a copy, and this is where I'm gonna place my words. Now I know that I have on each of my pencils about three quarters of an inch that's taken up by the eraser and the metal part that holds the eraser in. So I wanna make sure I take that into account as I'm prepping this design. I wanna create a rectangle that is 0.75 inches wide, and we'll make it 12 inches high to make sure we cover all of our pencils at once. And since this is just a guideline, I don't need it to be perfect. I'm gonna duplicate it and put it on my other set of pencils as well. Okay, now we can start adding our text. 
All right, so for this example, we've chosen four fonts. And what I found is that for pencils, a thinner, finer font is a little bit easier. It saves you on engraving time, but it also looks a little bit better on the pencils. So I went for fonts that had a lightweight or a thin weight. This one is Yaldevi, a lightweight. This next one is Cormorant, a C in a lightweight and eight point type. This next one is Palum in a lightweight and a nine point type. And then this last one is Advent Pro in a thin weight and a nine point type. So now we're set to cut both our, our jig and to cut our pencils. The first thing that we'll do once we've measured our cardboard, so we know that it's an eighth of an inch, now I can keep these guidelines. I want to ignore them. And then I also want to ignore each of the engraved names for now. Because all I want to do in this first operation is cut out the pencil slots from my jig. So we'll do that and then we'll come back for the next step. The first thing that I want to do is change the cut to ignore. And then I'm going to change each of the each of the sayings to engrave. I'm going to use a draft graphic, but I'm also going to adjust this slightly and I'm going to change the height. I very rarely use a manual height, but for this, I found that using 0.27 inches, the height of the pencil helps to make sure that you get a nice engrave. So again, we'll use the draft graphic settings of a thousand speed, 46 power, 195 lines per inch, but with a manual focus height of 0.27. So now we can see where it looks like our, our words will land. And this is where it gets interesting. So we know where we placed our jig. So I had to take the jig out to take the pieces out. And so I put my jig back exactly where I expected to. And you can see that it looks slightly off in the image, but let's just double check that everything's where we want it. So we don't want it. We will highlight everything grab everything and we will check our position on the bottom left corner. We'll make sure that we actually don't have these two little guys selected because they are changing our depth. So shift and click that. We'll unclick that one piece. Same on that one. Okay. So we're still positioned at 0.5 and 10.5. So if we put our jig in the right place, then these should engrave correctly. I'm a little nervous that they're right next to the metal. So I may actually move them over just a touch, all of them together. But typically you will just want to leave everything where it is because you did the math and the fisheye camera gives you a slightly skewed view of what you're seeing actually in the laser bed. So we are ready. We are going to print this and we're not going to set focus, which I always set focus, but because we gave this a manual focus height, we're not going to set focus this time. We're just going to choose to print. So these are our pencils from our first jig we made directly in the Glowforge user interface. So I might have used a slightly larger lines per inch to get a slightly deeper engrave, but overall pretty happy with this result. So you could do this entirely in the Glowforge user interface. Some tips to keep in mind, really try to place that jig exactly where you placed it before. So if you're using cardboard, the straighter your edges are, the easier your life will be because you can make sure that you line up on the left edge and on the bottom. If you're nervous about that, use something firm. So maybe use a piece of medium draft board or a piece of Baltic birch, something that has a little more of that distinct structure to it versus the cardboard. All right, let's move on to our Adobe Illustrator version. For Glowforge files, I always make my Glowforge files 19 inches by 10.9 inches just to make sure that I can fit everything that I want to cut onto that board. It also saves you from resizing issues once you go into the Glowforge user interface. Note that our pencils are seven and a half inches by 6.75 millimeters. One of the great things about Illustrator is that you can type in millimeters and it will convert it to inches. So we have that pencil shape ready to go. Now I know I want to duplicate this, so I will select it. I will use command C, command V to select it. I want to align the left sides of this. Then I will select both of them. Actually, before I go any further, I want to change all of their strokes to red uh, because that is what I use for cut in the Glowforge user interface. And I want to make sure they have no fill. I'll align all of these left side 
and I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute them evenly on their centers and then duplicate them again. I'll make those same two alignments. I know I only need two more, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy two and paste two here. If those are aligned and equally distributed, so now I will duplicate those using Command-C, Command-V, and then I will move these over and roughly align them there. So now that I have all of my pencil markings aligned, I wanna make just some notes so that I know exactly what I'm using this jig for and where I wanna place it in the laser bed, similar to what we did with our jig that we made in the Glowforge user interface. I'm gonna go ahead and predetermine where I'm going to place this in the, on the bed, and I'm gonna make a note about that. So, so we'll just add some text here that tells me that this is the Ticonderoga pencil jig. And you can brand it if you want, so that if you sell it, people will know where it came from. Now we know that when we take something into the Glowforge user interface, it can't handle text. It will convert it or just get rid of it. So we need to create outlines. And then in a little box here, which I will switch the fill and the stroke. And then I will change the color so that I can have a separate operation for this. I'll change that to blue. And then I will place some text inside of there. Tell me where I am placing these items in the board. So placement. We actually want to remind ourselves that we're aligning this on the bottom left using that bottom left button on the x-axis at 0.5 inches and on the y-axis at 10.5 inches okay i'll place that in my little box and then i will also make sure that i create outlines here as well so this is ready to be made into an svg so i will save this using my svg settings I will save a copy. These are the settings that I use for an SVG. So I use SVG 1.0. I make sure that any images are embedded. I always need to make sure that responsive is not checked because we don't want this to resize. What I like to do next is duplicate the artboard. And I'll show you why I like to do it this way. So I like to have the clean version of the cut settings only. I like to go into the second artboard to work on my text. And then I'll actually create a third artboard once I convert that text into outlines. This allows me to keep track of what fonts I'm using and to not change anything that's in that template file. So if I wanted to use that template file for something else, I could easily adjust that. And then as I change my text, I just need to change it in this second artboard. And then the third artboard I will use for the SVG. So let me show you what I mean. One of the benefits about using Adobe Illustrator is that you can use the fonts that you're comfortable with or the fonts that you have on your computer versus just the Glowforge fonts. So I have chosen a few fonts that I really liked the results on the pencils that I tested before. So I will bring those in. I found that about 10 point type worked for most of these fonts within my pencils, but I also double checked the size of the box that that text is in. I measured the area that's engravable and it's about five millimeters. So if I change this height to five millimeters, you will see that that converted to 0.1968 inches. So anything smaller than 0.1968 inches, I think will fit just fine. So I know that this one right now, 0.1637 when it's at 10 point type. Now, if you remember the other thing that we did, and that needs to be about 0.8025 inches wide, and we'll make it 12 inches high just so that it covers all of our pencils. And since this is just a guideline, we will just line that up roughly there. We will move our font over here and place it right in the middle. We'll do the same with this font and the same with this one. So now that is ready to go. Knowing that we're gonna engrave these other pieces of the jig the first time, I'm gonna actually remove them from this artboard because I don't need to have them again when I bring this into the user interface. And since this is my guideline, I'm actually gonna leave this rectangle here so that I remember that this is the one where I'm keeping the text as text. And the reason that I do that is just so that I can remember what fonts I'm using without writing it down. So then I will duplicate this artboard again, and I will go into that artboard, that third artboard. I will remove the rectangle, and then I will convert each of these to outlines. If you wanted to, you could change each color 
of these so that you have options for engraving. If you find that one font engraves slightly differently than another, you could change the colors of those and they would be seen as different steps in the user interface. But for right now, that's all we need to do because we know we're going to engrave those and I don't need to make them separate. So now I wanna save that as an SVG as well. While this is all selected, I wanna do exactly what we did when we were replacing our artwork for our jig that we made directly in the user interface. And I want to use the ruler function and I want to use position and I want to place the bottom left corner at 0.5 in the X and 10.5 in the Y, just like we have noted here. So if we changed anything with that, we just wanna change that note to make sure that we had that in there correctly. Now we know we want to, want to cut this one. This doesn't need to be engraved, it can just be scored. Same with this. And then remember, we made that a different color so it would be a different option and we can just score that as well. So this is all set to go we will cut this jig as well. My jig is now cut and replaced. So I'm going to upload that second SVG that we made onto our board. And you'll see the image of our cardboard that's in our cardboard jig and our image of our writing. So the step now that we need to do is we need to place this image. And we wanna place this image bottom left corner dot at 0.5 on the X and 10.5 on the Y. Now it looks a little crazy, which we remember. We need to change our material. I'm gonna change it to thick maple plywood again, and I'm gonna change that engra engraving to a draft graphic, and I'm going to ignore the cut lines. Now, this does not look like it's going to go into the right place, correct? Let's check our engraving, and we're gonna set it at a manual 0.26, and we're actually gonna increase those lines per inch just based on the other one we did. <laughs> All right, now these are our pencils from our second jig, the one we made in Adobe Illustrator. Now typically when I think there's something easy to do in the Glowforge user interface, I would recommend that you do that. But in this case, I think Adobe Illustrator is the superior product. And the reason that is, is because you have a lot more control over the size of the fonts and the fonts that you use. So in this case, if I had to put them head to head, I would say making a jig, especially for something as small as pencils where you really need teeny tiny fonts to make sure that they go on that flat part if that's the look you're going for, Adobe Illustrator is your winner. Other things to keep in mind when you're doing this is you really wanna make sure that that jig is going to be in the same place every time, especially if you're using something from Adobe Illustrator so that you can place the image exactly where you need to every time. The alternative is you make a jig on the fly and when you remove the pieces from the jig, you don't move the jig at all in your Glowforge. You just take those pieces out and then replace your product that you're going to engrave on or cut right in that jig as you're finishing up your jig. If you're getting started, you may wanna use a harder material and you may even wanna use some of your medium draft board that you got because that fits perfectly in the Glowforge bed. So that can make a great jig because you know that you're gonna to be totally lined up. How did I learn how to do all this in Adobe Illustrator? My friend Jacqueline Kyle, you can find her at the Fable Tree, which I will link her YouTube below, has an amazing course called FileMakers Academy. And that course really walks through project-based work to get you comfortable in using Adobe Illustrator to design SVG files. I will also put a link in the description to her course if you're ready to move on from the Glowforge user interface to learning Adobe Illustrator to support your projects. All right, now that you have all of these great products to sell, how are you gonna ship them? The video below will walk you through my favorite methods for shipping, what I like to include in my packaging, and how I make sure that I get the best rates every time. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the new content that I'm creating for you on Tuesdays and Fridays. 